to the 12 tribes of Jaja children scattered all over the earth. Greeting in the name of the Most High, Jehovah, and Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who rules the earth. Hope you can see this picture, of course. This is posted on 12 tribe Hebrews Israelites in Christ. That's the Facebook page that I post on when I have the energy and the strength. This is Richard of West. Essex or, or Wessex and Whitakers from my family side that's who they descend from this is one of the ancient pictures as you can see you can't even see his face because tells you the knights of the round team who were black as night okay so you see these Negroes before they became whitened as prophesied by Daniel and in the Maccabees all the ancient Hebrews and early Christians were black and they're still black to this day except the people who call themselves Jews now have to fulfill the prophecy based on scripture. So the Hebrews were always a black race and whatever the most I prophesize, it comes to pass in one generation or another. Okay. So that's my forefather, what he looked like. I think I still look like him to this day. You think that's the same color? Yeah, so the Whitakers descend from Richard, Richard of West Essex and my grandmother, she was born in Cambridge, England. We still have a whole lot of families over there. So that's what they look like when they fought the Holy Wars and the kings at those times were required to go to war and fight. So what may I go do today? Uh, respond to another person who keep trying to say Jesus didn't exist. Well, Joseph of Arimathea spread the gospel in Britain and he was fighting amongst the holy wars so this critic of the Bible and Christ says there are no thousand year old people there is no I'm going to show him people who are 900 years old he doesn't believe in our forefathers or the scriptures Methuselah he was the oldest that ever lived no one them in their time lived to be almost a thousand years old till the most high cut it short some of our people didn't die because the most i said they're not gonna die um john the revelator there's no record of his death and he saw everything happen as jesus prophesied joseph of arimathea as i said he was listed among those in the knights of the round table among the martyr the morte the arthur when they were fighting the holy wars in britain he was right there fighting the Saracens and he was from the time of Christ. Now, if you want to know who lives forever, start with Jesus Christ. He has no beginning of days and he has no end of days. Okay. Come on, somebody. We're going to do a little bit of worship. Okay, so Hebrews 7, we start with Jesus Christ, our King, who is the Most High in the earth. Because the Most High has no beginning of days. Jesus also has no beginning of days or ending of days. He says he's Alpha and Omega. So there's your proof of somebody who lives to be more than 900 years old. In addition, go back to the patriarchs, Nawa, and his forefathers, and Enoch, Methuselah, Adam. They lived a lot of them very long days so in hebrews 7 verse 3 without father or mother without descent having neither beginning of days nor end of life but made like unto the son of god ab abided a priest continually that's talking about jesus christ of nazareth so he is also alpha and omega do you know what that means in the greek beginning and the end okay this is the revelation of Jesus Christ, the last book of the scriptures. It says, Revelation 22, verse 13, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. 
and it was revelation of Jesus Christ. Revelation 1 verse 8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and was and is to come, the Almighty. So Jesus Christ is the Almighty, the same as Jehovah when he is in earth, because his fleshly form is a form we can tolerate on earth, because we don't have bodies that can con um, tolerate the power of the Father when he lives in heaven. And Revelation 21 verse 6, And he said unto me, It is done, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst, the fountain of the water of life freely. So Jesus has the power over life, death, grief, how long you're going to live, whether you're going to live at all, the earth and everything in it. Okay? So, who... situation the joy of the old earth it's Mount Zion on the side of the north the city of the great king all right you see from me look till now a book may I read my mother went dinner time ready she couldn't get me out of my book to go even eat the food so those people who think they can debunk the scriptures the information is everywhere. So, this is the sequel to the history of the Jews by Flavius Josephus. And this is to answer the question of the person who wants proof of the Jews who are more than 900 years old. Of course, I already gave him Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Joseph of Arimathea was fighting during the time of the Saracens, during the Holy War. John the Revelator has no record of him dying. And of course, you have Elijah that was translated. You also have Enoch that was translated from the days of the patriarchs until to this day. So we have more, more examples for him. This is going to be page 766 for those Jews that don't die. They just wander the earth. That's why we got the, the song, Three Little Wandering, Wandering Jews. Three little wandering, wandering Jews. One wandering Jews. One wandering Jews. Three little wandering, wandering Jews. The first little one was Abram. The first little one was Abram. Abram, Bram, Bram. Abram, Bram, Bram. The first little one was Abram. The second little one was Isaac. The second little one was Isaac. Isaac, 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 the second little one was Isaac, 
The third little one was Jacob. The third little one was Jacob. Jacob, cup, cup, Jacob, cup, cup. The third little one was Jacob. Two of them don't go, go down a Egypt. Two of them go down a Egypt. That a Abraham and Jacob. Isaac the one go down there, but he never get figo. Cause the most I tell him no figo. They all went down to pray to God. They all went down to pray to God. They all decide to pray to God and pass on their teachings to their children in all their generations. Teaching, chin, chin, teaching, chin, chin, we all wait now to pray to God. They taught them all to Egypt, 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 to what them go down to Egypt. All right, enough of that. So... This is the fable of the wandering Jew obtains credit. Several wandering Jews are reported to have lived. It was positively reported that one survived in the 12th century who was contemporary with the Savior. He was named Kalaphilos Samaran. So C A L A P H I L U S Samaran. And this is the 1200s. So that's like 1200 years after Christ. Another Israelite had been condemned to wander over the earth from the time of Moses. So imagine how old him be now. A third name, Asurius, is said to have been a shoemaker. An Armenian prelate declares he had seen him. The troubles of the times did not so occupy the people generally but they could feel warmly interested in a report which now circulated on what was held to be i authority that the wandering jew an israelite who had cruelly mocked the savior's woes when he was about to be crucified and had been doomed in consequence to remain in this life till christ should come in his power was then known to exist the mysterious and the supernatural have much charms for the majority of mankind that when once an idea is started of appalling extravagance, the mind is not easily disabused of it. Though rejected by reason and refuted by positive evidence again and again, the fable is revived and successive generations listen attentively to what their ancestors supposed had been set at rest forever. Such was seen to be the case through several centuries in which the story of the wandering Jew was confidently put forth, revived, and credulously re received by many. There was something so striking in the idea of a sinful mortal being commanded by the Son of the Most High to remain in this probationary state of being till the end of things created to see ages lapse and races of men pass away to be the survivor of his own posterity and though numbering countless years denied the prospect of repose in the grave that grave the source of terror to others the object of envy with him in this there was something so fearful that men told there was a voucher for it in scripture unfounded as the statement was could hardly be persuaded that it was untrue so that's probably also going back to the scripture that says some of them would not taste death till they saw the kingdom of god coming in its glory which happened to a lot of the apostles and they were able to see jerusalem sacked they were able to see paul bitten by snake and live they were able to see them raise the dead raise fish from the dead you should see some of the stories that came out of the um, apostles and the followers of Christ. There's just too many thousands of stories to capture all of them or to read all of them. The current reports familiarize the vulgar operated on some minds as to produce a serious delusion. Reason failed and bowed before the reiterated falsehood. And not only there were there men who seriously believed that such a person as the wandering Jew had existed from the time of our Savior and would continue in this life till the day of doom, but there were individuals who severally believed themselves to be the man. The afflicting state of an individual could yield to such a delusion did not prevent his wild story from being believed. The intrepid assurance of madness has in a thousand instances carried conviction to the hearts of all beholders, and the unfortunate 
who should have been secured in an asylum has been followed as an inspired teacher, a prophet, nay, as the son of God. The earliest report of this subject was probably circulated in the first century. In the 12th, it was more than once repeated. Basnage tells us, that's B-A-S-N-E-G-E, -E, tells us that in 1229, there came into England an Armenian prelate, the bearer of letters of favor or recommendation, which the Pope had given him, in order that he might see the relics of the saints also in the manner in which God was worshipped in this country. Matthew Paris, who was then living, seriously relates that many persons interrogated this person respecting the wandering Jew who was said to be at that time residing in the East and of whom wonderful things had been reported and they eagerly inquired if he were still there. The bishop in reply stated that the man was an Armenian and one of the officers of his train related that the poor dimension continued to exist. He had added that he had been the porter of Pilate named Cataphilus, C-A-T-A-P-H-I-L-U-S, who, seeing Jesus Christ dragged towards the praetorium or judgment seat, gave him a blow with his fist on the back to push him forward more quickly upon which the Savior turning to him said, The Son of Man will go away, but thou shalt await his coming. Cataphilus was afterwards converted and baptized by Ananias and called Joseph, and the officer said he will live till the end of the world. He reaches the age of a hundred years and then he falls sick and into a trance during which he grows young again and seems to return to the age of 30 which was his age when Jesus was crucified so here's another example of somebody else who was a Jew who didn't believe in Christ saw Christ being crucified the officer asserted that Joseph was known to his master at whose table he had seen him sit a short time before their departure the father stated that Joseph answered questions put to him with the utmost gravity and with a smile when inquiry was made as to facts which had occurred in his early life, such as the resurrection of the dead, when Jesus Christ was crucified or relating to the Apostles' Creed or the history of the saints. He lived in constant fear of the return of Jesus Christ to judge the world, for then he must die. The crime which he had committed in striking the Son of God made him tremble, but nevertheless he hoped for salvation because he had sinned through ignorance. And of course, Paul, he was also um, forgiven because he had sinned through ignorance as well. To refute fables like these, Bassan says is unnecessary, but he remarks in eagerness with which men propagate and listen to the grossest absurdities. There were when he goes on to relate several wandering Jews or persons who had been so described. The first invention of the kind referred to him who cast or founded the golden calf in the desert and who was condemned by Moses to wander forever as the punishment of so great a sin. He was named Samar, S-A-M-A-R. When he met and anyone he cried out loud, touch me not for I am polluted. An Arabian geographer adds a second fable and tells that there is in the Red Sea an island called Samari, S-A-M-E-R-I, inhabited by Samaritans who cry to those that pass them, Al Samas, touch me not, showing thereby that they are descended from the first wandering Jew named Samar. A third wandering Jew has been since imagined or invented. The first was a pagan, a porter to Pilate. The last was really a Jew and a shoemaker living near the gate by which Jesus Christ went forth on his way to Mount Calvary. He was called Aserus, A-S-S-E-U-R-U-S, -S -E and seeing the Son of God weary and faint and disposed to rest against his stall, he struck him. Jesus Christ said this to Aserus. Asuerus, I will rest here, but thou shalt never rest, but thou shalt wander till I come again. From that moment he began his course. He followed Jesus Christ, and he has ever since been a wanderer on the face of the earth. A Christian of comparative 
comparatively modern date as declared that he saw him in Hamburg in 1457 and heard him preach having been converted in one of the churches of that city. He appeared to be a man of about a man about 50 years of age of a good height and wearing long hair spread over his shoulders. Aseros Aseros was often heard to sigh from which it was concluded that he was sincerely penitent. We need not be astonished at the extreme credulity which could attend to such representation as so many imposters have for a time commanded attention. A single passage in this evangelist St. John was the origin of this delusion. It is there said that the Savior remarked that there were some that followed him who should not know death till they had seen the Son of Man in his glory, and it was then popular belief that St. John would not die. Since it has been reported, notwithstanding proof of his deaths, his death, nobody has shown the proof yet. And Georges of Trapezons wrote a treatise to prove it, that John was still living. <laughs> Some reported that if he had died, he came to life the next moment. It was added because there's even story of St. John being boiled in oil, you know. It was added and he didn't die. He, he was banished after that to Patmos. So some of his stories are pretty remarkable. Some report that if he had died, he came to life the next moment. It was added that he had been transferred with Elijah and Enoch to a place whence he would come with them and fight against Antichrist. And as you can see in Lemorta the Arthur, you have Joseph of Arimathea there fighting against one of the Antichrists, which were the Saracens. You know, one of them listed in Revelation 13. And how many years after Christ left was that? Postel saw a man who preached at Paris and who declared that he was the evangelist St. John. For this, he was condemned as a blasphemer and burnt alive at Tholus. Wandering Jews have been many times imagined to have survived through the centuries, and to them the words added by Jesus Christ to St. John have been supposed to apply. The Armenian archbishop who found credulous believers in England, and who himself perhaps was one persuading them that there was really then living the true wandering Jew, and he himself had seen and eaten with him. So there you have the names of those wandering Jews and apostles who are still appearing thousands of years after christ made that statement and if you want to know matthew that's a name in my family too paris is also a name so we are all the jews of jamaica we have all the names that you find in this book josephus book in fox's book of the martyr in the bible that's our names to this day okay with that i say shalom there you have your proof that some of them would not die until Christ returns and they would see the kingdom of God coming in its glory. Christ's kingdom, Christendom, is the largest, most successful, most educated, most powerful, most giving, most faithful, most praiseworthy, most righteous kingdoms on earth. And we will praise him all our days until he comes to rule the earth and to judge the quick and the dead, just like it's prophesied. With that, I say shalom. This is Lily of the Valley signing off. Proof of people who are more than a thousand years old to this day. There are their names. And this is page 765 to 766 from the sequel to the history of the Jews by Flavius Josephus. And the other book that I use where Joseph of Arimathea appears is Le Morte de Arthur.